This is Glenn Berry with SQLSkills.com, and I'm recording the SQL Skills Insiders video this week for our members. What I'm going to show you is something called the Server Monitor Database that I like to use to just collect some very basic instance level metrics once a minute by default. So I've got two scripts here. The first one is actually going to just come in and make sure we're on the master database and then create a database called Server Monitor. And when you just do create database like this, it's going to create a database with all the defaults that are set up for your instance, including the default location for your files. So you might want to change this in your environment. And then we set the server monitor database to be in the simple recovery model. And then I just come down and create a table called SQL Server Instance Metric History. That's going to have a few metrics that we're going to collect once a minute by default. And then I come down here and check to see if you're using Enterprise Edition with SQL Server 2008 or greater, because if so, I'm going to go ahead and use page compression on the clustered index right there. And then next, I check again, and I create a non-clustered index and either use page compression or not use page compression based on whether or not it's SQL Server Enterprise Edition and SQL 2008 or newer. So that's pretty simple. And then I come down here and create one store procedure called DB Admin Record SQL Server Metrics. And that's just going to come in and once a minute by default, it's going to collect the page life expectancy value for the instance and then CPU utilization for the last minute from the ring buffers. And then I'm going to get a few other things about average task count, average runnable task count, average pending disk I.O. count and then collect those other two items and insert them into that metric history table. Then I have one more stored procedure that just gets the recent SQL Server metrics from that table. So it's really pretty simple. And then down at the bottom, I create a SQL Server agent job called DB Admin Record SQL Server Metrics that's gonna, once a minute by default, call that stored procedure to collect those metrics and write them into that table. So that's all this does. And I'm not going to run it because I've already got a copy on my instance and I don't want to wipe that out. But you can see how it works. So once you've done that, then you can switch to that server monitor database and you can call this built-in stored procedure anytime you want to to see your most recent metrics for the instance. So you can see what the page life expectancy has been at one minute intervals and the SQL Server CPU utilization at one minute intervals and then the average pending I.O. count and the average runnable task count and then the average task count. An average task count is a good measurement of how busy your server is and quite often, if this goes high and stays high, you're seeing lots of blocking and deadlock type issues. And then average runnable task count is a good way to measure how many tasks are waiting for time on your CPUs. So if this goes above zero and stays there, that's a pretty good indication of some sort of CPU pressure. And the same way for average pending I.O. count. That means tasks are waiting for I.O. And you don't want to see this above zero for a sustained period. And then this shows you how high your SQL Server CPU utilization is on the instance. And again, these are just one minute snapshots, but it'll help you watch trends and history. And then page life expectancy is how many seconds something stays in memory before it has to get flushed out to disk. And you want a higher value versus a lower value. And you should be familiar with what your average PLE is over time. So you can run that query, and then you can also run this get averages for all metrics query, and you can see what the average has been since you've been recording. And of course, you could put a where clause on here and just narrow it down to a certain slice of time. You could also get the max for all of these metrics quite easily. And you could filter this by time. So you can see at one point I had a 22 max task count and I had a 93 pending I.O. count. So that's pretty interesting to know that. And I can also get the minimum for all these metrics. And then finally, I can come and get any time that the average pending I.O. count has been greater than zero. So I could look and see the different times where my pending I.O. count has been above zero and, and see if there's something might have been going on at that time, like an agent job or you know, I'm rebuilding an index or something of that nature. Until next time, this has been a SQL Skills Insiders video. Thanks for watching.